depths of Gotham. The perfect enemy comes to life. I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. Like me. He plots a foul reign of destruction. My dear penguins, thanks to Batman, the time has come to punish all of Gotham! What's going on everyone, The Great Town here, and today we're going to talk about Batman Returns. That's right, Batman Marathon is rolling right along and landing on Batman Returns probably, um, honestly folks, before, like, I've seen these movies first and foremost, uh, well, first and foremost, um, if you like this video in the end, don't forget to like and subscribe, and yeah, anyway, <laughs> uh, moving right along, uh, I've seen these movies countless times as a kid, in my teenage years, 20s, and now in my 30s, so... I've seen these movies tremendous amounts of time. The more I see them, the better they get with age. Okay, now on the rankings in my mind, they're kind of getting jumbled because before I rewatched Batman Returns, I, I always forget how amazing Batman Returns is. Okay, I always put Batman 1989 above Batman Returns because of the of Jack Nicholson as the Joker. I think he just same reason why The Dark Knight is probably my favorite Batman movie of all time, because of Heath Ledger as the Joker, and just the, the perfect, like, story and everything like that. Just It just marries it together in, in one nice little mesh package. Uh, Batman Returns, though, however, it does almost the same thing, with a lot of campiness, yes, but and you, and you don't get Jack Nicholson's Joker, but what you do get is a lot more, in a lot of, uh, a lot different uh, venue, er, avenues, I mean. Um, you get the, uh, the perfect performance, perfection <laughs> incarnate uh, with Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman, okay? And she is like the pillar of this movie that holds, not holds it together, but she is one of the pillars that uh, is why I want to like score it and rank it above Batman 1989 because she sells the shit out of this role, um, quite simply enough. And from start to finish, like, she starts off as this, like, meager, like, mousy, like, secretary, then something happens to her, I'm not gonna spoil it, even though this movie's 30 years old, it, it is, I can't believe Batman Returns 30 years old, but anyway, even though, you know, the movie's 30 years old, I don't want to spoil anything too much, I want everybody who hasn't experienced Batman Returns, a young, younger generation out there to experience it, if you've never watched it, but something happens to her in the movie, and then she becomes, like, this badass by, like, the second, ha second act, and uh, it's just really, really awesome to watch her evolution uh, throughout the entire movie and the way she sounds the, the, like the confidence in her voice the sassiness in her voice when she's Catwoman it, it just really like makes you go wow that's she sounds very like um, seductive almost and like and not, not only in just like a sexual way but like just a, a glamorous way she's glamoring you and uh, that's one of the pillars. Uh, also, Danny DeVito as the Penguin is tremendous. He he looks the part. He feels the part. It's it's just like Danny DeVito playing himself in real life. Like vile, gruesome, grotesque, disgusting, repulsive. It's Danny DeVito. <laughs> He's just playing himself with a fucking long nose and, and fucking flippers, and that's pretty much it. And a fucking like uh, pajamas. That's that's it. He wears a he wears a, a suit and, uh, and fucking uh, parasols uh, with machine guns. Uh, well, uh, you know, from time to time, and fucking helicopters away, whatever. But anyway, so um, just to briefly touch on the story, the synopsis of the movie, um, you know, Batman's doing his thing. He, he take, picks up where the last movie left off. He now is the bat signal. He's, he's being accepted by Gotham City's of the authorities, Commissioner Gordon, this, this, and that. Uh, has accepted him into the fold of the city to be a protector, an official protector of the city. And now he's dealing with this penguin man of the sewers, um, you know, uh, trying to figure out what his deal is and the gang that he... Uh, he controls, uh, dealing with goals. also, um, these one of the other supporting actors, um, Christopher Walken as Max Shrek is also a, a treasure as well, he's like a national fucking treasure, that man, he is like just as, like, um, eccentric as Jack Nicholson, so that's like the Jack Nicholson character of the movie, he's just very wily, very eccentric, and, and just very aloof, and I think he really just, he does a, a, a job like con conveying like the man, like the corpo, corporation, 
uh, man in power and what they'll do to keep that power and so on and so forth and the manipulations and the manipulative like uh, like demeanor that they have and I think he did a great job. Uh, Michael Keaton with as Batman, you know, without saying he's a fucking goat. I said it in my Batman 1989 review. I'll say it again. Uh, there's a lot more cool things going on in this movie. Granted, there's no Batwing, but when you get a Bat boat. The Bat boat is there. Um, you get the Batmobiles in its in its glory again, doing some cool shit with the Batmobile that you haven't seen before, fucking lighting people on fire and shit like that. Uh, I think thought that was pretty cool. But no, I mean everything from start to finish, the acting, the performances, the devious plot, the when you and you know the the, the kind of twist that it twists twist and turns it takes along the way. Granted, it's a little campy. It might be a little campy for some, but that. Campiness is what makes these Batman, Tim Burton Batman movies just special to me in my in my heart. So, and with that being said, like from the, the acting, the performances, the plot structure, the pacing, the um, the the beautiful like Tim Burton is a visionary and he's like he's like the '80s and '90s version of Zack Snyder because he has such beautiful set pieces and in tandem with probably the best Batman score of all time by Danny Elfman in the background, like in the last scene, the last one of the last shots of the movie. Where you see the camera pan off of Gotham City and the camera raises up and then you see the bat signal in the background as the, the theme and it's very, very subtle. The theme plays subtly in the background. Not it's not like intentional, it's very subtle, very subtle. And it just it just fades to black and you're like, wow, it gives you I'm giving the chin the chills just talking about it. It's it's amazing. But besides that, the uh, the chemistry between Michael Keaton and Michelle Pfeiffer is pretty fucking rock solid. Um you can tell, like, it, in the comics and stories that have been told, Batman and Catwoman always had this, like, un, unspoken thing, like, will they, won't they type of thing, and, you know, they had this, like, attraction toward each other, and it, it plays part here, and it's in and out of the costumes, and I think it's great. There's one line that's dropped in the movie that, you know, um, that both uh, Batman and Catwoman say to each other, and then they say it again when they're out of costume, and they kind of, when they finally reveal, that it's revealed, like, how they know who each other, each other uh the personas are i guess that's a spoiler but sorry i guess but you know that's just kind of the point i'm trying to make is that their chemistry is really profound and i thought that they did a great job casting and a great job mixing and the direction here was just on on par on point as well as the writing and the screenplay and yeah and you know if i had like yeah, like i said if i had to have any flaws with this movie it's the campiness and also you know if you, you got to kind of look the other way with michael keaton as batman because he just kind of loves to uh inadvertently kill people. <laughs> he's fucking driving bombs to people. He's fucking throwing, throwing people off buildings and shit like that uh, without you know, smiling while he's doing it. Fucking, he, and he's smiling, folks. And he is smiling. So he's smiling while doing it. It's, it's fucking hysterical. Uh, but it's, it's better than Batman with an AK-47 in his hand shooting people. I'm sorry. Inadvertent, you know, it's like the whole saying goes in Batman Begins, you know. What did Bruce Wayne and Batman say to, to Ra's al Ghul? He says, you know, I'm not going to kill you, but I don't have to save you either. So I'm not going to kill you, but I'm not going to save you. So that's the kind of little like uh, segue there and like the underwritten, unspoken, unofficial method of him get out of jail free card from fucking so, um, second degree manslaughtering these people. But anyway, so with that being said, uh, yeah, no. Um, so I guess let's just wrap it up. So yeah, um, uh, if I had a score, Batman Returns on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. You can call that biased. You can call that unbiased. That is just my personal opinion. It's how I feel. I felt after I watched this movie. It just brought warm and fuzzy feelings all on my insides, all of it, just as as Batman 1989 did, but more so here. More so, it just, I don't know why. It just, it, I mean, I know why. I've just explained why, but I mean, you know, over, you know, some people might not, might not agree because they might hold Batman 1989 as the fucking, like, pillar of these movies and the, and the pinnacle and the peak and put on a pedestal, but... You know, there's just something going on in Batman Returns. It's just like I said, I think it's the, the, the key word and the theme is like the chemistry. The chemistry between all the actors on screen, the chemistry between all of that with the set pieces and here and there and this and that. And it's just, it just works. It meshes well together and it works. I know that it didn't get well received by the critics over Batman 1989, but you know what? I thought it was better. I mean, in in a lot of instances that I just aptly named here. So I hope uh, some people can agree out there. With, now, if you don't disagree, if you disagree, and you still hold Batman 1989 above above Batman Returns, I respect that, because I did too, but the more I watch Batman Returns, the more it kind of just, kind of takes that, kind of takes the cake, so, anyway, so yeah, um, that being said, that is my little review of Batman Returns, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, don't forget to like and subscribe, next movie, you guessed it, Batman Forever, and you know what, folks, full disclosure before we wrap it up here, Batman Forever is a weird movie, yes, in a lot of regard, but, 
I liked it. And I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of the review. I liked it. I thought Val Kilmer was a solid Batman. And Jim Carrey was a fantastic Riddler. So, yeah. Um, Tommy Lee Jones kind of did suck as Two-Face, though. And we'll leave it at that. We'll leave that. <laughs> we'll leave that breakdown for another day. But anyway, thanks as always for stopping by. And I will catch everybody on the next one.